Michael Dahl. Illustrated by Bradford Kendall. Return to the Library of Doom. Behold the Library of Doom, the world's largest collection of deadly and dangerous books. Only the librarian can prevent these books from falling into the hands of those who would use them for evil. What happens when a creature leaves its footprints inside books? Chapter 1 Wet What's wrong with Bronco? asks Owen's mother. Bronco is Owen's dog. He has owned Bronco since the dog was a puppy. Owen hears Bronco growling and barking outside. You better go bring him inside, says Owen's mother. Maybe he's got a bear, says Owen's little brother, Doug. Owen takes his flashlight and steps outside. Bronco has stopped barking. Where are you, boy? calls Owen. Owen's family lives in a town in the mountains. No one has ever seen a bear in the town before. But Owen knows there is always a first time. Something big and dark crashes through the bushes by the tool shed. Owen sees another dark shape lying inside the tool shed. Bronco! yells Owen. The dog is quiet. It is still breathing, but its eyes are shut. On the ground near Bronco's body are large footprints. They are not bear prints. They are bigger than bear prints. Owen also sees a book. It is an overdue library book. He must have left it in the tool shed. Owen knows he will have to pay a huge fine. Owen reaches out his hand to pet his injured dog. The fur is wet. Blood? Wonders Owen. Owen shines his flashlight on his wet hand. It is covered in thick, black liquid. It... Chapter 2 Strange Scratches Owen's mother called the vet after Owen carried Bronco inside. Owen and the vet both lean over the dog. The vet wears gloves. He carefully checks Bronco's body. He's been scratched, says the vet. It looks bad. Then the vet looks closely at Bronco's eyes. I think your dog has been poisoned, he says. Poison? exclaims Owen's little brother. I've never seen scratches like these before, says the vet. I'm not sure what kind of animal attacked Bronco. Then the vet looks at Owen's mother. I think I should take the dog back with me, he says. The vet drives off with Bronco in his back seat. Don't worry, says Owen's mother. The vet will know what to do. But how could he? Wonders Owen. He said he'd never seen scratches like that before. Who or what made those footprints? Chapter 3 Back to the Library Owen grabs his flashlight and steps back outside. He returns to the tool shed and picks up the library book. This book is months overdue, he says to himself. Owen doesn't have the money to pay the fine. Then he remembers another book. It was a book in the library that he loved to look through. It had photos of every kind of animal's footprints. Owen would be able to find the footprints of the animal that hurt his dog. Then the vet would know how to treat Bronco. The boy glances quickly at his house. 
Then he stuffs the book into his jacket pocket and starts running down the road. The woods are dark and cold. Snowflakes fall from the frozen sky. A few times, Owen hears growls from behind the trees. Each time he does, the library book seems to squirm in his pocket. Chapter 4 Footprints and Footnotes Finally, Owen sees the light up ahead. He darts through the library door. No one else is inside the library except for Ms. Eel. Almost closing time, Owen, says Ms. Eel. I'm getting ready to go home. Yes, ma'am, says Owen. He sets the overdue book on the counter. Then he runs toward a corner of the library. It is the reference section. His eyes scan the titles of books on animals and hunting. There's the book, whispers Owen. He pulls a thick book from the top shelf. The book is full of hundreds of photos. Each photo shows an animal's footprints. But something is wrong with the book. On page after page, the photos are covered up. Some are crowded off the page. The book has been filled with strange footnotes. Owen flips through more and more pages. He can't find the footprints he is looking for. Ms. Eel steps into the aisle. Owen, she says, did you know there's a big fine on that book you brought back? Then she looks over the boy's shoulder and sees the reference book. Ms. Eel gasps. Not again, she whispers. Chapter 5 The Legend Owen watches Ms. Eel's eyes grow wide with fear. Ms. Eel suddenly pulls another book off the shelf and opens it. Then she grabs another and another. She opens each book and throws it to the floor. Then Ms. Eel glances around the empty library. We have to get out of here, she says. What's going on? asks Owen. It's here again, says Ms. Eel. We have to leave now. What's here? asks Owen. He hears a loud growl outside the library door. Ms. Eel freezes. Then she grabs Owen's hand. In the back room, she says. Hurry! The growl grows louder. Suddenly, several books fly off the shelves. Ms. Eel screams and covers her head. Owen and Ms. Eel run into the back room of the library. She quickly turns and locks the door behind them. The woman stares nervously through a small window in the door. What's going on? demands Owen. And what's wrong with all the books? Ms. Eel kneels down. Have you ever heard of Inkfoot? She asks quietly. Owen frowns. You mean Bigfoot? He asks. No, Inkfoot, says Ms. Eel. Bigfoot is just a myth. Inkfoot is real. He hides inside books, explains Ms. Eel. Most people never know he even exists until he comes out of the books. And he never does that unless something makes him angry or frightens him. Like a barking dog? Owen thinks to himself. Ms. Eel grabs the book that Owen was still holding. See these pages, she says. Footnotes. That's how you follow his trail. Owen stares down at the pages. He looks at the footnotes covering the photos. He thinks of the ink 
that covered Bronco's fur. Owen needs to tell the vet about Inkfoot. We have to call for help, he says. There's no phone back here, says Ms. Eel. I don't have a cell phone with me. Do you? Owen shakes his head. Owen stands up and looks out through the door's window. Facing the window is a tall shelf of books. In the spines of the books, Owen sees a dark shape. The shadow stretches from the bottom shelf all the way to the top. The shadow seems to cover at least a hundred books. It looks like a gigantic, hairy beast. Chapter 6 Inkfoot It's out there, says Owen. The creature's growls fill the library. Shadowy arms throw books and shelves to the floor. They hurl chairs against tables. Hairy fists smash through computer screens. I can't see it now, says the boy. Then he looks down at the floor of the library's main room. A dark puddle covers the rock. The puddle is growing. Owen! yells Ms. Eel. Look! Ink is seeping through the bottom of the door. Soon, the ink is several feet deep. The thick, dark liquid swirls through the room. Don't touch it, says Owen. It's poison! Owen looks at Ms. Eel. She is touching a shiny brooch pinned to her sweater. It is shaped like the letter L. The L begins to glow. A whirlpool forms in the middle of the room. The ink begins to drain away, pouring down the sides of a huge well. Suddenly, a man flies up from the well. He wears a long, dark coat and dark glasses. The librarian! shouts Ms. Eel. I came as soon as I saw your signal says the man, nodding at her brooch. He flies out the door of the back room and into the library. The shadow of Inkfoot rises up among the bookshelves. The librarian raises his hands. A powerful wind blows from his fingertips. The monster's shadow breaks into small square pieces. Here is Inkfoot says the man, or at least what's left of him. The librarian shows a piece of paper to Ms. Eel. It is a sheet of end notes. Then the wind blows Owen's overdue book into the librarian's hands. The man looks down at it and grins. If you don't mind, Ms. Eel, says the librarian. Instead of being overdue, I think what we need is a do-over. The man claps the covers of the book together. A blaze of lightning flashes through the library. Owen and Ms. Eel both gasp. The library has been returned to normal. All the books are back in their place. The computers and chairs are no longer smashed. Ms. Eel looks up at the clock. Closing time, she says. She tells Owen not to worry about the fine. And when Owen rushes back home, a healthy Bronco runs out to greet him. <laughs>